Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. Morena, you gorgeous, beautiful people. Stand to your feet. Let's party in the hey. I see you. I see you. Let's party in the house tonight, this morning. <clears throat> yeah. We all got cordless mics. Uh huh. Yeah. Check it out.
Shot in this place, come on. <laughs> yeah, let's welcome up our awesome general. Break it down, break it down. Hallelujah, hallelujah. One, two, one, two. Morena, Fana, Morena. How are we this morning? Yeah, awesome. Let's give a big shout for our worship team. Somebody, give them a churcher, a high five, a little slap if you need. If there's nobody there, just pray them there. It's all right. No empty space here. Kia ora. All right. My name is Audrey, Audrey Drum. I'm here to do the notices for us this morning. The great privilege. Wahine tour in the house. Awesome. I've been planted in this place. I was thinking about it been planted in this place nearly 16 years. Wow. What am I now? Am I a fire or a... No, no, no. I'm still Audrey. Don't, don't call me fire. Okay. No, awesome. Just welcome everybody here today on behalf of our senior pastors, our eldership, our leaders, and our whānau throughout the Waikato and throughout New Zealand, actually. Welcome. If you're new, first time, you're in the right place. Kapai? 
Awesome. All right, we're going to get ready for our tithes and offerings. So as you get, get ready to dig deep, we take AP, APP, and CASH. Oh, come on. Come on. I practice that. I practice that. All right. Okay, why do we give? Because we love to sow. We love to sow into this place. And I remember that somebody sowed for me when I was a little rat back. When I was a little, you know, out there in the world doing my thing, think that I knew better, all that stuff. My auntie planted a seed and she didn't tell me till later. I planted a seed for your air hole, she said. Okay, choice auntie. So you plant for this place, sow for this place, plant for others, and then we plant for us. We sow that seed. All right, that's what we do. So when you're ready, lift those up. Our ushering team's gonna pass around very shortly. I'm gonna say karakia, and we're gonna make it happen. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for this place. You called us here 16 years ago, Lord, and we're still here. We're still advancing. And you planted that seed in our hearts, and I thank you, Lord, that the seeds that are planted today to advance this place other people's lives to advance the kingdom will be done in Jesus' name because we stand here united in one and that it will be done. Amen. Thanks, Tommy. All right. Everyone had a great week? All good? Yep. Amen. So we come here. This is our Sunday. This is the transitional place. We get a feed and then we get a top up. Get the top up on Monday from our apostle. Yeah, great feed. I love that. Home ground, getting back into the roots. Even though I've been here 16 years, I still love it. I always go fresh. Always take it afresh, soak it in. And I think, oh, yep, nah, need to improve on that. Need to work on that one. I love it. And we're so blessed. We're so blessed to have our apostle speaking to us every single week. So we get a little taste here and then we get the bomb bomb from our puzzle every Monday night, 7 p.m. If you're having issues signing in, please grab somebody today for information um, or maybe Hikatia. Hiki? Hiki. Um, she's like, no, no. All right, because I had a few issues Monday night, maybe someone else did, but get it sorted today. Don't wait till Monday. Make sure we're all locked and loaded to receive that. All right, Manifestation Nation. Yeah. I remember my first conference. Sorry, you're getting a lot of firsts today. I remember my first conference. Briar was just a baby. We were so nervous. We didn't know where to sit, what to do. We walked into this big place and we're like, whoa, man. It really was a manifestation of sons. And it's great for us to see that it's not just about us, that it's, there's a bigger picture, and we get to have our apostle every single day and download that feed. It's like a hungy. It's like a triple hungy, hungy. Okay, with a triple steam pudding, pudding. That's right, that's our apostle. Make sure you're getting your tickets. Uh, more information, go to our information. If you need some help, come and see me. But don't be nervous, it's okay. If you can hook in with other people, people in your group, do that. If you can lock in with someone that can help you with the combination, we're here to help. We want to get you there. Because we want you to experience what we experience. I remember the first time I was so nervous. I didn't know nothing. Didn't know nothing, but I got my feet there. We didn't have money. Things were tight, but we made it happen. So reach out, okay? Reach out, Fano. All right. Baptisms, let's give a big shout. Come on, baptism, let's give a big shout. Yes. Okay, heads up to our generals over here, Rini and Bronson, that are overlooking that for us. That is happening today. Today, Fano, that's happening. I think we've got like 18 or 19 people being baptized. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wow. The kingdom's waiting. The kingdom's ready to celebrate, to advance. That's what we're talking about, water baptism. It's down at Arcus, okay, down there by the river. Okay, we're going to muck around, duck you in the river. Might have to hold some down a little bit longer. It's all right. We had to do that for Sai. He's still alive. But you will come up. You'll come up. You'll, you'll be fine. 
that's all right. We got you. We got you. All right, so that's happening today, 12.30. Uh, talk to our generals if you want more information, how to get there. All right, we're nearly there. All right, overcoming anger. Okay, this is part of our programs, programs that we run through our family centre. I was just hearing out of district this morning, 36 people, majority community. Wow. I love that. I loved hearing that. So get along this Wednesday, 7.30. Hook yourself up. Cool. And our next one, prosperity planning. Oh, mate, we have everything for you here. We have everything. We got you sorted. Prosperity. We want to live in prosperity. But we must plan. We must have a plan. It don't just happen. Uh, nah. Nah, nah. Okay, it doesn't just happen. Seriously, you got to have a plan. You got to get alongside people, get under their word, get under their teaching, show you some new stuff about that. When is that happening? Saturday the 24th, 10 a.m. to midday. All right, look at our website as well, Disney Family Zebra website for more information there. But yeah, you can have it all. I love that about pastors. Our pastors, they always say every area in your life you can succeed, every area. I never knew that, I never knew that, but every area, so that's us, Fano. All right, big shout out for Man Up, Youth Nation, and Legacy. Yeah, I mean, big ups to everybody that's continuing, that's been going strong, our facilitators, our supporters there, they've been reaching out to our community no matter what bringing this program to them, this lifestyle actually, keeping it fresh, going out every week. I just honor you, salute you, say you're amazing. And look at some of the fruit, 18 baptisms today. Man, it works, it works. All right, so our website there, manupwaikato.com for more information about those programs. But usually it's every Tuesday, and Thursday, all right? Hey, two more, two more. Maybe, I might say a joke. No, I won't. Where's Pat? No, I can't beat Pat. All right, Fari Paku, our men. You might have to hold on. No, no, no. No, you don't. Sorry, we do got our renovations happening out there. We've got a portaloo out the back here and out the front, uh, out the back here in the car park, okay? For our men, we'd appreciate that if you need to go Fari Paku, You've got two options there, all right? While well, your toilet's getting renovated. Yeah, I love that. Renovations. Cool. Yeah. And last but not least, ministry time. So we come together, have a kani kani, and then our pastor's going to bring an amazing word that's going to speak right into that situation for you. All right? And then you're going to soak in that word, and you're going to sit there, and you're going to say, yes, amen. This for me. We're gonna revelate, we're gonna receive it. And then you gotta work on that. And then you gotta put that into practice. And then if you need a little bit more karakia after, come on up to the front. We've got our amazing leaders here that can help you through any situation. Tried and tested, each and every one of them. So if you need that, come on up to the front. Introduce yourself if you're new. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to pray for you. Cool. All right. And our last notice is Kids Church. Tamariki. Our Tamariki. So we got all our children sorted. If you're new here, it's good to know we have these services available. Okay. So if you go through our double doors upstairs, um, through there, you'll see our services. If you've gone to the wrong place, it's all right. Okay. To play. If you haven't signed in, okay, to play. It's all right. We've got you. We'll sort you. Just know we've got something for every child here available. All right? So when we're finished here, please um, take your children or tell them to. Off they go through the doors. But if you're new, make sure you go with them, okay? Sign them in. Get them sorted. The front rows are yes. All right? Can't play. Well, that's me, everybody. Yeah. We should back our, our worship team. Kia ora. Awesome. Thank you, General. Yeah. One more round of applause for our awesome General. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right.
Start from this side. We're gonna sing. Let me switch it up a bit. Here we go, like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's your turn. Let me hear.
enters. This is a place where atmosphere changes. This is a place where you don't have to carry what you've had to carry this week. This is a place of freedom.
your hands for the Lord, make a shout for the Lord, yeah, yeah, it's time for the main event, yeah, it's time for our daily bread, it's time for the Word, somebody praise the Lord for the Word, come on, somebody praise the Lord for our pastor, somebody praise the Lord for our bishop, somebody praise the Lord for yourself, Iwi Temple, raise the roof of this place. you Lord we love you Lord we praise your name yeah Woo-hoo-hoo. oh I could go on all day but let's welcome up the main event our awesome pastor somebody give praise to the Lord come on oh awesome let's give this team a big hand I enjoyed that that was great Loved it. Beautiful, beautiful. How about you turn around to your neighbor and just say, you look spectacular. Well, you guys all look spectacular. Awesome, Adida. Fantastic. Isn't it awesome to be at God's house? What an exciting place to be. Wow. Man, nothing compares to this place. Coming in here, just the whole atmosphere, the vibe, uh, presence of God, the heart, the aroha, is just um, absolutely tremendous. Uh, just so, so fantastic to, to not only see it upon your faces uh, and to hear it in your voices, but to feel it in the atmosphere. Nothing like a, a, the atmosphere of God's house when God's people uh, gather together. It's just really awesome. Man, I'm just looking forward to, when I think about that, to our conference coming up on the first weekend of June there, June the 4th to the 6th, I think it is. That's just going to be just great. Let's give up to God for that in faith already. It's going to be just the best ever. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, we had a, um, a Zoom call with uh, Apostle and all the pastors from across the country on Friday evening. And it was just great going over some things. And going on, the, on the Friday, um, the conference main conference opens at seven but uh, it's going to be great we've got also a, um, a national um, hui and community leaders hui um, for community sorry national iwi and community leaders hui on the friday so that's just going to be really awesome and so pastors from all around and leaders and iwi leaders and church leaders from around the country are going to be there and so mark solomon is going to be convening that um, there at um headquarters there at Drewster's Road. So that's going to be great. And just let them lead up into that uh, Friday night. It's going to be a very spectacular um, service that night. And um, because a lot of those uh, iwi leaders, community leaders uh, will continue to stay on for that that night. So it's going to be a really dynamic, and I'd say it'd be a real dynamic cultural night as well, I would imagine. Um, More detail, I guess, will come over the next um, four to six weeks. I think it's only seven weeks away, eh? So I um, really want to encourage you, just be, just be getting ready for that. Make sure you're there. Go online, um, book that spot there, and get ready, get that accommodation, um, and bits and pieces. Uh, just going to be absolutely fantastic time. I'm so looking forward to it. Uh, they're just transformative type weekends, aren't they? You know, and if you haven't been to one, God, don't miss it. Don't miss it. It's just going to be fantastic time. So let's pray, and I'm going to share what God's put on my heart. Father God, I just want to thank you, Lord, right now. Lord God, to be here is truly a, a, a marvelous moment. And Lord God, I pray your blessing. Lord God, as I come here today, not to just share my words, because Lord, they're pretty small, they're pretty empty. They're really not going to go far. But Lord God, your word, your truth, and the revelation of that made alive and, and receivable. So Father, I pray, let there be an impartation 
of your word and your spirit into the heart of every man, woman, and child, our children, all the children next door. Lord God, those who are not able to be here might be watching online. Father, I, I pray that blessing upon us all, Father. We give you all the praise, Father. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to give a special shout out to my daughter, Carly. Um, she um, is now in... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Say hello. hello, darling. In London. So she's in London. She lives there now for the next two years. So it's um, our, our youngest child has left home. And um, so, you know, so it was a bit of a, a moment leaving her at the airport, especially with everything that's happening around the world. But it's great. And she's in a good place. And zooming in online, watching that. And she's going to get part of a, a local church over there as well. So that's really good. So good girl, Carly. Beautiful. Yeah, I know I'm awesome. Thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Cheeky now, eh? She'll be going, Dad, Dad. Anyway, praise the Lord. So, hey, um, I want to talk about this. The, the title of, of, the, of this message is called Impartation to Transformation. And uh, really, it's not so much about teaching the ins and outs of that. It's what you receive on a Sunday. It's an impartation because this impartation is something about an impartation, something being inputted into your life that is able to bring you to a place of incredible transformation. There's nothing God cannot do in your life. There's nothing you can't heal, you can't restore. There's nothing you can't break through. There's nothing you can't overcome. There's nothing you can't be totally victorious over. I tell you what, there's an impartation here that'll lead to transformation that sets you up so high, so great for you, your future, and your family's future. Um, so I just love this. So um, Listen to this. When impartation is blocked, let me just get straight into it. <laughs> when impartation is blocked, your ability to continually transform will be blocked. And that's why it's so important as you come to the house of God is forever to have that place of participation in hearing God's word and an openness to receive God's word so that that impartation is not blocked by anything from yesterday, last week, Maybe it might be this morning, things went down with the kids or with your partner or your spouse, whatever it might be, but you don't let it impede in receiving an impartation of God when you come into His presence here because if your, if your impartation gets blocked, your transformation will get blocked. And remember, transformation is not a one-off thing. Transformation should be something that we, you know, because we're a transformative community, so that should be ongoing week by week, month by month, by the end of this year, you'll better look and say, man, I'm different to the, to the way I was at the beginning of this year. I'm stronger, I'm bolder, I've, I've got some more victories under my belt, I've, I've cut some giants' heads off. You know, I'm in a better place now than what I was at the beginning of the year because it should be, transformation should be a level to level, a faith to faith, and a glory to glory growth in your life. Someone say a big amen to that. Amen. So you can start awesome in receiving impartation, but with time, it is real easy to slowly let the impartation receiving to be slowly shut down to the end. You just sit in church and you might nod your head and give an amen, but inside your spirit, it's shut down to receiving an impartation. And you can get very much into, oh, I've heard it before, or I know that, or I know, well, the reality is that's a, you're lying to yourself because there's always more to know. You have not fully known everything about God. I do not know everything about God. I have not fully received everything God has got for me. I do not know every bit of every scripture, neither do you. So there's always room to receive more and layers upon layers and depths upon depths of who God is, what God's got for you, who you are, etc., etc. You must stay open to an impartation today. You must have a heart that's not closed down and caught up, listen, to the fumes of last year's revelation or the fumes of when you got saved 10, 20, 30 years ago. I got saved in the early 80s. I can't live off the fumes of the 80s, otherwise I'd be a very dead, non-fruitful believer in Christ. 
I'm living off the, the, the blessing and the flow and the fumes of today, not of yesterday, not of 10 years ago, not of 20 years ago, not of 30, not of nearly 40 years ago. I can't afford that because I'd go stale and I'd become an old wrinkly wineskin. And wineskin, old wineskins can't receive the new wine. They can't receive the new juice. They can't receive the new anointing. You've got to keep yourself pliable, ready for impartation. The moment you think you've got everything, the moment you know everything, the moment you know, think you know better, listen to this and the preacher. You're in trouble, man. You're going to dry up like an old prune. You'll become judgmental. You'll become critical. You will come shut down and you'll tend to everything in your walk will go inward into you and your walk with God. And that's pretty much where it all ends up, just you and your little life with God. When God had never created you to be like that. God created you to be this blessed person, to be a blessing. This person who just invokes the favor of God upon their lives. So a person who just has a river flowing mightily through their, their spirit, man. It, it just like a river, he said, it flows out of your belly. That river is, is able to touch anything. Rivers can move things out of the way. Oh, there's a river of God for you to receive of impartation. Do not shut yourself down to something of the past. But open your heart today to everything God's got for you. Amen? You see here in um, Matthew, turn to Matthew chapter 1. It says the book of the genealogy, the start of the Gospels, uh, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Then it says Abraham begot. Let me just start off here today. This first, G, this first verse we see here in the book of Matthew, where Jesus is declaring, and God is declaring, that Jesus is not just the Son of God, but it actually doesn't even say here the Son of God. He starts off with saying the Son of David, the Son of Abraham. So He's the Son of God, He's the Son of David, and He's the Son of of Abraham. So what is he doing here? He's now connecting back into his papa, into his ancestral line, because there's something so powerful about this ancestral line. There's something so powerful about his papa here that God, right from the moment of the New Testament, wanted to arrest your understanding. He wanted to arrest your, he wanted to get you all apprehended. Right now, for something here concerning who you are in Christ. He immediately goes to two of the biggest spiritual heavyweights of the Word of God, David and Abraham. And if you go over to verse 17, it says there, so all generations from Abraham to David are 14. And then it says, from David unto the captivity of Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity of Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. And you might think, why again, it's pulling out here the two, these two heavyweight hitters in Christ's papa, which by the way, just cut to it, and many of you know this, that's your papa, that's your spiritual papa, that's your spiritual ancestry line. And he goes straight. Now, what does he do here in verse 7? It's very powerful, is that he, he likens this to, and he pulls them out, he highlights out of all the ancestors and there's some great ancestors in there but there's none of them is like Abraham and David and again he highlights it here in verse 17 but then he says something interesting he says there was 14 generations each time there's 14 generations and you can easily look over that what's 14 mean what you've got to understand seven in the word of God biblically or numerically biblically is the word for perfection when it is two times seven which equals 14 that is talking about spiritual perfection so what God is wanting to infuse into your heart, and as a, as a really as a, a, a overall a first people's church, a, an indigenous Maori church, you you understand Faka Papa like nobody else, right? Is that true? Oh, I've got two Maoris in the house. <laughs> so you understand this, and yet here he says, "I have now." Now, if you go over to let me jump over to Galatians three, it says. 
Christ has redeemed us from the curse of law, having become a curse for us. Curse is everyone hangs on a tree, it's the, the death and then comes from that resurrection of Christ. And then it says that the blessing of Abraham might become upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. So we see there that in Christ Jesus, we've been pulled into the spiritual whakapapa, or the spiritual ancestry generational line of Jesus Christ, which is now connecting us, it says there, into Abraham and into David. So you're with me there? Just some people might not understand that. Um, so now we've got there. So now he highlights these these two heavyweights of Abraham and David, who are the spiritual, absolute beasts of glory of God. And he highlights them, says, I've put into your DNA, I've put now into your genetics, I've now put into your actual likeness, I've put the power of Abraham and the power of David, and of course the power of Christ into your life that those genetics, those traits, and they remember he's highlighting here a point that they are the, they are the perfection of, of your tupuna in your spiritual papa that now you are connected into through Christ. You have been so stacked up. You have been so set up to win in life. It's crazy. You've been so stacked up to be this great and bright and most beautiful breakthrough people the world has ever, 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 ever seen. He says, the gospel shall be preached in Jerusalem to the furthest parts of the world. Where do we go to get the furthest parts? New Zealand is one of the furthest places away from that place where Christ once walked. And right down here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, God is doing something so marvelous, so great. It has to start with the first people because God's a God of order and God starts with the first peoples of this land. There's something so powerful. There's something so glorious upon Maori culture, Maori people that this world is looking to see the rising of a new era, a new day, a new way, a new Maori in this land that is going to grab hold again the oracles of God and the glory of Jesus Christ and then manifest it to all the nations of the world, to all the indigenous peoples of the world, to all the people that have been trodden down and wrecked and ruined through colonization and other foul works of the enemy, that now there's got to be a people that arise, and it's you who God has called, and it's you who God has a, has a chosen. Crazy thing, he chose me for it too. I'm as bark as you get. So he chose you, it's not just on skin, it's on heart, but there's a definite, definite, definite call upon the first peoples of this nation. Oh, I tell you, you should start to feel so amazed at who God called you to be. Tell you what, talk about removing of shame. Talk about removing of every bondage that you wonder the enemy came against you to bring. You stole the lands of Waikato with all the land wars that took place. That was so demonic to enslave and to rob and to ruin and bring people into poverty and bring people into brokenness and to break up families and to put them back in jail, incarcerating dad, mom, and the children and robbing and wrecking. Don't you think God, he has and stood back and not done anything. He sent Jesus. That's why when Maori, when even the first missionaries came here, they flocked to Christ. They all were, were going to, so many massive percentage were going to Christ. And then things stuffed it up because man put his ugly fingers in there. Remember, time for history lessons. But oh, I tell you, I tell you, so God highlighted these two incredible men. Because of course, we've got Christ. We've got to see that, that what Jesus says, these are, I'm a son of David and I'm a son of Abraham. There's, he likened himself to these, it says that there's the, the, the spiritual perfection. Wow. There's something, man, I want from these brothers. Glory to Jesus. Give someone, just give, just bask in this. Bask in it. Bask in it. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. 
I'm excited right now. I can hardly contain myself. Whew. It's just, oh, I feel the fire in me. I tell you, it's just blazing. It's changed from when I walked from downstairs to here. It was blazing up and I was blazing upstairs praying. And I started to walk halfway down the stairs and it, God hadn't finished with me. So I walked back up, stop, and then he started speaking to me again. And so I thought, hey, can I know why I wasn't allowed to come down and worship? I had to come up, stay up there and listen. So I could come down here and speak into your life. Speak into your future. Speak into your whanau. Speak. Look, I'm going to speak to some, some hidden areas in your heart today. Some shut down, locked down places in your life today. Matter if we are Maori, Pākehā, Chinese, Japanese, Taiwanese, or just Nizi, or easy. I tell you. Speak into your heart because it relates to every one of us. Amen. And God called you and he placed you in this place for divine purpose. So this suddenly it moves from outward and it moves everything to inward. So one part you can be talking outward and then next one you've got to go to, it's all about being what's happening inward, inside of you. What's happening in place, where's your heart, where's everything. That's why it relates to, that's why this is a kingdom church for all people. Though it might be predominantly Māori, yet it's all people. Beautiful, eh? So always, so to my white brothers and sisters, you feel very secure in this. Because it's awesome. You're privileged. I'm privileged. Others around us are privileged. Works both ways. And so we see this here of the spiritual heavyweights in, in, in our Faka Papa here. And we see Galatians 3 that Jesus broke every curse. So we don't have to live under curses anymore, the curses of our forefathers, the curses that we were brought up under. So many of us were brought up under so much brokenness and curses. Like, I want you to know, you don't have to live under that, nor do your whanau, your friends. Just tell them, you can be free. You can be free. It's time for you to be free. It's time for you to come out from under that stuff. We can change some stuff. We can change. You don't have to be part of a statistic anymore. If we're going to be part of a statistic, it's one of success, one of prospering, one of doing well, one of having great family life, one of good health, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Well, doing awesome, flourishing, blazing forward for your children and the next generation. Amen. But in Genesis, in, uh, sorry, in Galatians, there, in Galatians 3 and verse 14, it's interesting, it says that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, that's us, those who are non-Jewish in nature, but we're Jewish now, you know, in flesh, we're now Jews, spiritual Jews, but that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus or come upon uh, Maori, Pākehā, etc. in Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. There's two words that jumped out of me there, and that was the word that the blessing and through faith. The blessing and through faith, blessing and faith, blessing and faith. Two credible words right there. In Genesis 12, because I want to I wanna grab hold of Abraham today. And in Genesis 12, we know there the incredible story, Genesis 12, 1 to 3, and that where Abraham came out from his father's house. And what did he do there? It said, actually, let me just turn there real quick. Um, in 12, 1, is, and God said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house. What was God doing there? God had to do this. God had to realign his papa. He had to realign his ancestral line. Because God was, Abraham had no idea what great things God was going. He had no idea that we'd be cheering him on and clapping and going, yeah, Abraham. And wow, Abraham, you're amazing. He had no idea this was going to happen. All he heard was that something, faith, word came from God that he had to move out of the limitations of his father's house. It didn't say don't love his dad, don't love his whanau, but come out of the limitations that have been, you've been 
put into a box. You've, you've been hemmed in. You've been shut down from so much more. And God says, I've got to pull you out of the box, man. I've got to get you up and going. I want to realign you into a whole nother fucker, Papa. So he says, I want you to come out of your father's house. You'll still love your father. You're going to be a light to your father. You're going to be a blessing to them because later on it says you're blessed to be a blessing. But he says, I've got to pull you up into something more. i got to bring you closer to me, your heavenly father, so that you start to see and that I can begin a new fucker papa, a new ancestral line. I couldn't use Adam because Adam and Eve blew it so big. I couldn't notice there's no reference to a son of Adam here. Now, the other places they are referring to the, the first Adam, the fallen man, to Christ, the second Adam, the, the resurrected, life-giving spirit man. But otherwise, you don't hear of Adam. Because Adam and Eve blew it, man. They're, they're, you're, it's like in some ways they're still in the, they're forgiven because they, they, there was innocent blood was shed of, of animals to cover them and animal skins, their nakedness. But it's a little bit like they're in the naughty corner. I'm sure you all feel like oh, they, they must be dreading the end of the world when, when you know, when everyone, you know, God wraps up the whole thing up and, you know, what we're all going to be saying to Adam and Eve, they'll be running for cover. But it's all right, we're forgiving, right? <laughs> but what we see here is that he takes them out because he's setting a whole new Abrahamic line with Abrahamic covenant promises. He's creating a whole new line of people that would be a blessing to all people who connect to Christ and are able then to come into this. And he says, and I'll take you. So he takes them, he pulls them out of the old fucker papa and the old family line and the old limitations. And he enters them into the realm of spiritual fucker papa, spiritual power with his heavenly spiritual father in the sense of heavenly father. And he's placed there in this place. Now listen to this. Faith must precede all actions. And when it does, it will bring you into the blessing. The blessing didn't touch Abraham first. You've got to hear this. Blessing didn't touch Abraham first. Faith touched him first. Faith preceded the blessing. He moved out on what God said. That took incredible faith. It took incredible heart. It took incredible willingness and obedience and and dying to himself. It took, you know, imagine what his family would say. How many of you got hassled by your family when you gave your life to Christ? I got my hand up, (laughs) both hands up. You know, we get hammered at times. Not all families, but a lot do because they don't understand it. But you've got to keep going because you're going forward for the sake of your family. And so, it says, I will make you, it says, I'll make you a great nation and I will bless you. Your name, I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. You see, the blessing didn't come. It was post-operative. It came after he had faith and moved out in action. You hear what I'm saying? Faith always moves before blessing. Too many people want blessing, but there's no faith to bring them into that blessing. Oh, bless me, Lord, bless me, Lord. God will be saying to you at the same time, says, yeah, well, I have already set you up to be blessed. You should just use some faith and step into the blessing. It's going to be faith, the Bible says, that moves God. It's only faith, the Bible says in Hebrews, that pleases God. Your need doesn't move God. (laughs) Your faith moves God. You can stay in your need and wallow in your need and, and cry in our needs and, and, and all that sort of stuff. i just got to be straight to the jugular here this morning. But it's faith that moves God to bring you out of that place and into something bigger and better and greater. So give me an amen. So faith must proceed. Listen to this, James 2 verse 18 it says, But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. And then it says, um, James says, show me your faith without your works. And listen, I will show you my faith by my works. Now, I talked last week about good works and that sort of message. You can go back and watch it online. But I will show you my faith by my works. Faith will always be seen in your works. 
It'll be seen in your actions. It'll be seen in your steps. Faith will always be seen in your lifestyle, how you live day in, day out, week in, year in, year out, month in, month out, decade in, decade. If, if faith is revealed through our steps, through our action. You know, you can have all the talk about faith, but really it's nothing until there's action with your faith. Someone say, come on now. There's got to be action. I got to have, I got to, if I'm not, if I've really got some faith, I got to be stepping out of the boat. I got to be stepping out on the water and making something happen. Bible says, um, you know, see, many walk, work in, in hope more than faith. And that's why they don't have a lot of fruit to show because they're mistaking the difference between hope and the difference of faith. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, verse 1, Now, faith is the substance or the stuff of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is this. Listen to this. Faith is the stuff that makes manifest what you hope for. It makes it manifest. Everything you see in your natural eye right now all came out. It started off as a hope. In other words, a dream. Hope is the dream realm. It's the visualizing realm. It's the dreaming realm. Oh, one day, Lord, one day. It starts like that, but then somewhere on the line, it took some faith to step out and start to look and start to, and not only just see it, start to make it happen according now, not just to the hope that I once had, but to the faith that I now have. So it was not hope that caused me to walk down when they offered me a building up there. And I says, no, it's too small. I want, what's that bigger one down there? Oh, that's not for sale. I didn't even hear that. I heard it, but I didn't hear it. I says, I want to look at that building. And so I walked up. There used to be roller doors there. There was a little, little about a three, four mil drill hole in the, in the, in the uh, roller door. And I poked my eyes up to it, and I could see this building. was I couldn't even see it, but it was full of um, Fonterra. Uh, what was it? Milk powder packed to the roof. This whole building, wall, that wall wasn't there. This wall wasn't here. It was just an old, cold, dusty, um, cobwebby warehouse asked Tom because he was the, the the manager or whatever it was down here little did I know I met him at the door a week later when they gave us the key and he came down and opened it up and showed me around little did I know within a year he was going to become a member and has been a member now here for 18 years isn't that awesome so you want to learn about loyalty and faithfulness go and talk to Tommy and his lovely wife Anita there, there's a picture of faithfulness and, and went through some tough stuff, that brother too. Tough stuff, lost his first wife to cancer. That's a hard one to overcome. Never always stayed loyal and faithful. They, they give him another hand for that one right there. So then God blessed him with an amazing new wife. Isn't that awesome? Hallelujah. There you go. You owe me lunch now. No. <laughs> but see, it takes faith to step out and start to see something. So many people live in the, in the realm of dreams. But dream is just a dream. You can grab the wonderful words of our brother Martin Luther King, I had a dream. But the thing with that man, he also had more than just a dream, he had faith. And he walked those streets of Alabama and, and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and did what he did. It takes faith to step out and move forward. When Peter um, saw Jesus walking on water, he saw it, and then he visualized himself in this moment of amazement. He obviously suddenly saw himself walking on that water. And with a moment, he yells out, Lord, can I come? Don't you love him? What a character. What a cheeky fellow, man. You know, I think it's like probably most of you would be cheeky like this fella if you were there. Give me a go. Give me a go. No fear. No worries. No cares. About what, give me a go. And so Peter, I'm sure he was, I'm sure that fella was part moldy. At least had a bit of him in there, I reckon. And so he jumps out, gets out on the water, and he starts, <laughs> blow me down, bro. I'm walking on water. But then he, he clicked out of looking to God and and looking to Christ, and he starts to look into himself, and then he let fear get in, and he starts to sink. But isn't it awesome? Our Savior is always there to pick us up when we're walking in faith and walking in water. He won't let you down when you're walking in, in faith. 
He will lift you up when you go a little bit carnal on it, when you go a little bit human on it, when you go a little bit sideways on it. He'll still put you, he ain't going to let you drown when you walk out in faith. He ain't going to let Johnny Boy drown walking out in faith. Amen. He's not going to let you drown. He's too good for that. You're too good. He's invested his life into you. He ain't letting you go easy. He ain't going to let you tip over. He, ain't, he can't let you. He ain't gonna, you're not going to die this week. You're not going to die this week. Next month, you're not going to die either. And someone might say, you can't say that. Well, I just did. You ain't going to die this year then. <laughs> nor the next. Nor the next 10, 20 years. Grab it by faith. I grabbed that myself. The Bible says in Psalm 91, the long life, he will satisfy me and show me the salvation of God. I claim that, long life. Amen? So I can't die. Yet. So faith is the stuff that makes manifest what you hope for. Isn't that beautiful? Makes it manifest, makes a reality. So listen to this. Hope keeps you in the realm of drawing on others' blessing. Where faith gets you into the realm of solutions of being the blessing. Hope keeps you in the realm of drawing on others. See, that's why I don't want to live in hope. Now, hope is a very beautiful thing, very powerful thing. I know it's not a it's not a lessening of that, but I'm just showing you something higher than that, something going on from that. Because faith gets you into the realm of solutions. Faith, you know, people are looking for people who can come up with solutions. And we need to be doing things that are outside of the box, doing stuff that's not being done by others because they're all trying it and things aren't happening. We've got to be a people of faith more now than what we've ever, ever, ever been in a post-COVID world and a world that has definitely changed forever. And I see, I see the... Um, the ups and downs the COVID has brought over this last year. It's shaken everybody. And the Lord says, I've got to shake everything that can be shaken. And, and people's lives have been totally turned upside down. Just going up the airport there on, on um, Thursday when we dropped Carly off to go to London. You know, it's like, <laughs> it was a ghost town. You know, and I thought, poor people have lost their jobs. You know, and the ripple effect that must have caused day eh, in the community in South Auckland and Auckland and all the pilots and hostesses and fella hostess fellas, whatever they call them. Um, you know, and, and then all the workers who load the planes and all the logistics companies and, you know, the big warehouse out there and the countdowns out there and the pack and saves out there and the shop, you know, all lost all those customers. You know, you can't help but feel for it, eh, you know? And and it doesn't affect us in a sense here, but where I think it has uh, um, been a challenge for everybody it might not have been, you might not have lost your job, but you might have got a better job because some people have done really well through this. But it's brought, in, I think, an unsettling into you guys as believers. I think it's unsettled some of you without necessarily realizing it. And it's tried to, I think, instead of going into the absolutes of the word of God and the truth of God, it's tended to go out and try and grab this or grab this or grab this, and it's unsettled people. And it's caused, I think, a little bit of temporary living mentality, living for just today. And I think it's the subtleness of pandemics and the possible death scenario, though it's minute for us, praise God, my absolutely minute, minute um, uh, for us in New Zealand, is that it's it's people unconsciously have looked for the temporary. So the temporary thrilly, thrilly things or self-satisfying things of life, which aren't all bad, but not necessarily all good when it takes you away from some absolutes of God. Take you away from the absolutes of Christ first. Absolute of being in the house of God, not forsaking the gathering together of the brothers, it says in, in Hebrews on a weekly basis. Uh, you know, spending some time with God, grabbing your Bible out and reading a chapter of your Bible. Learning to walk in the Spirit, and we're now walking in the buzz of what we're doing. So whatever that might be, and, and we've lost the, the joy and the buzz of God. And I think COVID 
has done a lot of this to the church. I mean, we've been really blessed that pretty much we've been able to have church all along through this. We're overseas. They've only just done to open the churches now. What is California? They've just opened the churches. The government says, enough's enough. We're opening the churches anyway. In the UK, I know I was looking for a church for Carly, and, you know, she's got an idea of where she's going to go. So I was checking it out, and it's, you know, where it is and what others were there, and rah, 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 rah. And, and uh, you know, only just opened, if not even, I don't even think they're open today or tomorrow in, in our time there. You know, because but we've been able to have church like meet. It's pretty amazing. So we've got a good, but I still think even in New Zealand, there's this looking for this external stuff instead of building, and we've lost a bit of the building of the internal, and so we've lost a little bit of our way. And that could be multiple, multiple areas. areas. And I just want to put that out there because sometimes we need some understanding of our times and understanding. But I believe God's rebreeding and re rebuilding and, 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 and he's, he's reset this whole season, hasn't he? And I'm blessed for that we've got an apostle like we have is so reverentry and able to hear from God on so many of these big things for us and has nurtured us through this and where sometimes you might not understand or get it, I tell you, keep listening keep plugging in, keep participating in, keep receiving impartation and just being open even if the head doesn't get it because I tell you God has taken us through something I believe God has actually allowed all this and set all this up because he's doing something because it says that he would allow this to happen earthquakes, plagues, pandemics wars, etc, etc so he's in charge but we've got to come back to this. It is that nothing happens without faith. I want to build again a fresh level of faith in you today. I want you to move out of just dreaming the dream and actually doing the dream. That's faith. Dreaming the dream is hope. Doing the dream is faith. I want you doing it. I want you in every aspect, not just one. I'm going to share one in a moment. But in every aspect, I want us doing it. Everyone say doing it. Man, that's good English, isn't it? Doing it. <laughs> Sorry to any school teachers here. <laughs> why, do, why do I say that? Because I want you in the realm of blessing. I want you living in the realm of blessing because... One thing I just fresh revelation this week. Of course, I knew it before, but like I didn't know it because it's fresh. See how it just keeps coming, and and as that faith precedes blessing, get that afresh because it'll this is going to stir your faith in so many avenues of your life. Now, um, one of the noticeable blessings on Abraham was his financial success, his money world became very blessed it didn't happen by luck it definitely did not happen by hope it was the absolute outcome of faith and obedience to God and it this just stirred me afresh I got stuck on this this was awesome so I'm sharing you what God showed me is freshly awesome listen to this the DNA of your spiritual fucker papa is faith that leads to blessing this now is a gen spiritual genetic in you when you received Christ and came into this house. Faith in you right now is wanting to explode because I'm opening it up. I'm tickling its ears. I'm stirring it around. Not tickling ears in the wrong way of the scripture there. I'm t stirring it's probably a better way. I'm stirring up the gift within you. I'm stirring up this gift of faith. I'm stirring up this ability to get out of just dreaming the dream but doing the dream called faith. And so faith moved Abraham into a spiritual fucker papa. It moved him and gained his blessing. Faith continued to move him from level to level to glory to glory. And that's why impartation leads to ongoing transformation, which I trust you're getting now. Now, in Genesis 14, this is beautiful. I love this. This is just fresh. I love this. Um, in Genesis 14, verse 14 to 16, I'm going to paraphrase some of it and share bits of it just because of time. But here we see Abraham now, he's come into this place. He's moved out of his, his 
his um, biological or natural whakapapa family home. He's moved into the spiritual house of God. He's moved into the spiritual whakapapa of his life that God's now using him. Um, so it's just him and God because he's the start of the Abrahamic line. He's, God's bypassed Adam. God bless Adam. He was the start. We've got a bit of him in us as well. Uh, but you know what? God highlights this very special one because we learned that in Matthew 1 verse 17, how special that he is. Um, and so we now come to this place. He's like, how can I liken him? Abraham here is like the new Christian. He's like the new believer. He's been in the Lord a couple of years. That's new believer. A couple of years in the Lord. New believer. So he's in the new believer realm. And in verse 40, it says, Abraham, the enemy comes in and takes some of his whanau. And it takes his brother and his whanau captive. And so he goes and gets some of his those gods added to him, his, um, who now becomes his own private army. And he goes out and he starts to win battles. So just want to get this picture. In other words, when you first come to the Lord, what has starts to happen? You actually start to win some battles. Am I talking to anyone? You've had some little victories there. Eh? You go, wow, God did this for me. Wow, that's amazing. Hey, you all got that? And if you're brand new, that's coming. So really be happy about what's coming. And and you start to get these, and this is what spoke to me here. It's like Abraham's getting his those break, those early breakthroughs, and he's getting those <laughs> those victories, and he's getting some wins on his belt, you know? He's getting some little notches in his belt. You know that man, my my God is awesome. My step of faith and obedience is incredible. I'm winning battles. I'm I'm winning family. I'm touching my whānau. I'm, I'm doing some great. God, you're amazing. Remember, he's only in this for just a few years. Just like you, a few years in God. And so he's in this place. And remember, faith precedes the blessing. And so he's got this faith to go out and win people and touch them and get some breakthroughs. And then what starts to happen his blessing now starts to get attracted to his faith. See, blessing is attracted to faith. Blessing, everyone say it, blessing is attracted to faith. If I want to get your life and your family blessed, I've got to get you moving in faith. Amen? Faith moves mountains. Faith inherits and appropriates, the Bible says, all the promises of God in Christ Jesus. So it's faith that's, so now he's he's not chasing the blessing. He's not out there trying to chase a dollar. He's not he's not making his job the 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 be, be end and end all. He's not there worshiping his boss and listening to everything there and that's everything. No, he's got this relationship with God going. He's got faith operating, and because of that blessing, now it's come. Now next minute it says there, verse um, uh, sixteen. So he brings all these things back. Um, that had been taken by the enemy. And verse 18, then Mechazeldic, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of the, most God, of the God most high, and he blessed him. See that? He blessed, he said, blessed be Abram. This is before God called him Abraham. It just means father. Abraham means father of nations. Blessed be Abram, the, of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. Look what starts to happen. He's starting to get kings come to him. He's now attracting people who have the ability to bring blessing upon his life. Can't start to come and speak to him because of his faith. His faith is down to move everything around him. It's moving people that, that uh, one, the king Melchizedek is, is a, a priest of the Most High God. So there's his pastor. There's his man of God turns up in his life because faith starts to get him. He didn't end up with, ble he didn't start off with blessing. Blessing came. He started off with what? Faith. So faith is the starting blocks for you to come into blessing. Faith precedes the blessing of God. Faith attracts the blessing of God. And every level attracts the right people. It attracts the right stuff. It'll attract the right things. It'll attract the right everything you can think of. All starts and comes out of faith. Why weren't we taught this at school? Man, I wish I was told this as a kid. Man, I wish I had someone tell me stuff. 
but I had to find out the hard way. Thank goodness for the grace of God, amen, that we're here now. And so, listen to this. Faith actions, faith lifestyle will always cause the blessing to come your way. Isn't that awesome? So he's now been out winning. He now gets to a place where blessing, he's getting blessed. He's having pronouncements of blessing over him. And God, now notice this, and it says, blessed be Abram of God most high. So now God is being elevated because of his faith. You want God elevated in our nation? If you want God elevated in our city, in our region, what do you got to start doing? Living a lifestyle of faith. Because when you start to live the lifestyle of faith, God will start to be elevated. Isn't that awesome? So not now, not only blessing is attracted to you, right here, God is getting worshipped. God is getting praised. God is getting elevated. And the Bible says, if you would lift up the Son of God, the Son of Man, all men would be drawn unto Him. So the more you start to operate in faith and blessing gets attracted, now you see, now the praises of God are going up. Come on, isn't that awesome? Now God has been worshipped and glorified and God has, has been recognized as the source of what? Your faith. You know, this is why you don't have to try going around Bible bashing people. Let your faith be seen. Let your faith, be, it'll manifest in your lifestyle and your works and how you do it. And then what happens is that God gets elevated and they'll start recognizing that God is at the core of your faith and your lifestyle and your belief because they see the excellence of the life you live. They see the excellence of character. They see the excellence of integrity. Wow, work ethic just goes, you're not a shirker anymore. You're not sitting having two-hour lunch breaks or stopping down the road and hiding off down the side road to, to have a little more halfway through the day. Or, you know, you, you, you are a worker. You're, you're in it. They see it. Your faith, what you do in your own private life and your own personal time, and they see it and they glorify your God in heaven. Amen. So then in verse 20, then the most craziest thing. Now, I want, I want, to, I want to turn this on, up on its head because uh, I'm going to talk right here about the tithe. It says, and then it says the craziest thing, this perfect ancestor of ours, he says, and he gave him a tithe of all. First place, the tithe is mentioned in the Bible. Apart from the revelation of the tree, don't touch it. But the first time the word is actually used. He gives him a tithe, the tenth of all that he has. And he gives him that. I got, I got to turn this upside down because most people want a tithe because they want a blessing. Most people want a tithe because they want a blessing. I'm turning that all. That, that's wrong, man. You, you, you just want a tithe because you want a blessing. It's all wrong. Sorry. It's all the wrong way around. You see, what happens here is that Abraham hits into this extraordinary moment, this extraordinary, this is out the gate, man. This is what I love about faith. It takes you living out the gate. God is so out the gate, he's crazy. The foolishness of the preaching of the cross will save your soul. That is out the gate. I love him. He's awesome. He's so cool, man. My father is so cool. Your father is so cool. He has this craziest thing. And he says, well, here's a tenth. Here's a tithe, man. Take it. It wasn't to get a blessing. It wasn't to gain favor with God. It wasn't to gain something with McCaslick. It was just a response to all that God had done in saving him, bringing him out of his old generational line that was cursed with foreign gods, false gods, brokenness, heartache, and brought him into this beautiful place of salvation where now he's a couple of years old in the Lord. Find he's young here, okay? He finds this ability to break through. And because of his faith, blessing is getting attracted to him. 
If you've been saved, born again, I guarantee you're winning some battles. Might be small, some might be big as well. And I guarantee some blessings have come your way. Because so often people say, Pastor, God blessed me with this. And it's so, I love seeing it because you're so like, wow, God's blessing me. And it's in those little things that sometimes are the best ones. Because you know it's real personified from God to you. You know what I'm saying? And you go, wow, you're just too much out the gate, Father, once again. And it moves your heart. This is exactly where Abraham's at. He, you should be able to solve it. Are you identifying with him? You getting this? And he, and he says, right, boom, have it. Have this. I just want you to have it. Why? And this is where God put me back up in my office again. And I wrote this down. He responds to the blessing and the breakthroughs with this tithe, and it comes out of this beautiful place of just thanksgiving and honor and praise and thanksgiving and honor and thanksgiving and honor and saying like, how blessed am I that God called me out of my father's house. He could have called this one, that one, but he called me and he called me out of that and he put me into this new faith life. Give me a whole new fucker, Papa. And he didn't understand who he really was here. He probably looks up there now and he's probably saying, John, I didn't even know that I was gonna be the, uh, uh, in the fucker papa of Jesus, the son of God, the Messiah. I had no idea that you and I were gonna be related and that my genetics were gonna be in you, Johnny, and all the church down there. He didn't know that then. So he's probably up there just going, wow. He's probably been for a few thousand years just walking around going, wow. Wow. Oh God, wow. Listen, faith will put a wow into your life. Faith will put some wow into your life. You've always been looking for a wow. That's why you try and think clothes will do it or, or physical shapes will do it or having him or having her will do it or having money will do it or that getting wasted, getting drunk, going partying and laughing a lot and having a crazy time. You were always looking for a wow. I've just brought you to the wow that never dries up. It's a well that leads you to the well of life and life forevermore. Don't chase the wows of this world. Chase the wow of God. Chase what God's got for your life. It will revolutionize you to the very corner, the very right down there with that bit of old KFC chicken is still digesting. It'll get right down in there with that bit of poo ah is still sitting. And pork bones. for the wow of God. So Abraham, and he's still doing it. <laughs> well, here you are. Here you are, Lord. This is yours. And he set something up. Listen to this. Please listen to this. Blessing didn't start by tithing. It started by faith and action. Wow. I just think I'm turning this upside down for you today. Man, it's beautiful when you hear something fresh from God. Blessing didn't start by tithing. It started by faith and action. Now listen to this. Because this is what it did. By him responding to God with such honor, because where your heart is is where your treasure is, Jesus said. So this was such an honorable thing. It moved him, listen, into a place of securing his blessing. This is what it does, church. It secures something for you. He moved into this place of securing his blessing, not only for him, but for generations to come by tithing 10% of his income. Isn't that amazing? He secured something. Because the tithe didn't bring the blessing. He was, his faith brought the blessing. You can tithe till the cows come home and you will find no blessing. I tell you now, and that would be honorable and cool and praise the Lordy, but really? 
Why don't I turn this all upside down on its head? It's faith that draws the blessing, but it's the tithe that secures it. And you go to Malachi 3, and there, and it says, it's get the, it says, talks about bringing your tithes and offerings to the house of God, and it says, get the windows, it says the windows of heaven will be opened over you, and the devourer will be rebuked on your behalf. What is that? It's securing it for the future. So what Abraham, he was, this was not, this was not, nat, this was not Abraham's clever brain. This was the spirit of God. This was him revelating in something which he probably did not fully understand. And that's why he's still walking around going, wow. <laughs> that he, he realized and it secured something out of a faith and it secured and rebuked the devourer from his life. And you look at his life, how it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up. And he's winning battles after battles. He's winning breakthroughs after breakthroughs. He sets up his family line to get blessed. And right down through the line, you can look at the fucker papa. Yep, there was some that tipped over, some fell off. But overall, it just kept, it just kept getting pushed down through his family line, right down to David, then right down to the captivity, and then in Babylon, and then right through into to the, the, um, the presentation of God on earth and the man Christ, or the man Jesus, who was called the Christ, Christ not his surname, and, and the man Jesus, God comes in the flesh. No wonder he's, the Bible talks about the 14th generation of Abraham, David, and Jesus, because they're perfection. There's perfect things in them. Of course, Christ, the ultimate of all perfection. Amen. And you see this. Wow. So your tithe secures my blessing now and in the future. It secures my blessing. Man, I, was, I just want to tithe more and more when I realize this. I, I just bless it. Just, I just, uh, that's just beautiful. I can remember the first day I ever tithed. I was walking to church. I was already getting blessed. I was in Abraham. I was already getting blessed. I got saved. I got blessed. I was winning victories. Man, I'd even be able to save up some money to buy a ghetto blaster. You know the big ghetto blasters back in the 80s? I'd even, so I was getting blessed, man. You remember I came to the Lord with nothing but a, a, a small bag of clothes and debts at the courthouse. So I had nothing. And, and you know, now I had a job and I was able to buy a, 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 buy a, a ghetto blaster and, you know, and I remember walking to church one morning and I said to my, my mate, who's now Pastor Marty down at Destiny Nelson, and I says, Marty says, what, what's, this, what, 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 what's giving or what's that word? <laughs> you know, tithing? And he says, oh, it's where you give 10% of what you get. And I go, oh, really? Oh, cool, that's me. I'm going to do that. And um, I'd already put, because I knew you should give, you know, because I got sent to little Presbyterian church as a kid and they had one of those round wooden plates who remembers where I, and they had more coppers in there than anything else I think just about fell off you said if there was a dollar note in there and they would get passed around so I sort of had a concept of it but I didn't have no understanding so I says oh so I always took something in my pocket so I, I had five dollar note and five bucks back then I was only getting about 130 150 dollars a week pay so that was quite a bit of money and um no, it wasn't. I was earning about a hundred dollars back then, because I had five dollars in my pocket. And so, so I said, "So what's ten percent of a hundred dollars?" Because that's what I earned a week. Hundred dollars. I'm not that old, by the way. Just that inflation has really wiped up your guys' wages. Um, and um, he says it's ten dollars. And you know, right then in my heart, I said, "Man, I can't wait to give ten bucks next week," which was my time. See, I'm not doing it to get blessed because I already felt blessed. I had my ghetto blaster. Yeah, buy, and it had twin tape deck at the front, and I would take it, and <laughs> so it's pretty cool. <laughs> and I would take it to the church and let the church borrow it so that they could record the pastor preaching, and then they'd quickly record some after church and let other the kids workers hear what the pastor preached. Because I wanted to be a blessing. It was just a naturally in my heart. That week, Thursday night came. Uh, back then, five o'clock on a Thursday, you got paid, and you had a little, um, a little brown envelope about this big, um, 
and um, you would go and pick that, you would sign for it in a big book, you'd sign for your pay, and um, you'd go and, oh, cool, you know, it was all cash, and not, there was no bank transfers, nothing like that these days, and uh, you must be sounding so old, but I'm not, I'm only 35, and, uh, and so, you know, and I went in there, and you know what, that week, I was the only one in the factory or administration or sales stuff, I was the only one who got a pay rise. And guess how much the pay rise was? Five bucks. So there was the five bucks I was going to start giving extra. 17 and a half. Nick, about then I was probably getting near 18 years old. I've not stopped tithing my whole life. Wow. That just makes me feel so happy, to be honest. I'm now talking to myself. And, you know, for all the seasons of babies and children, and, you know, I got married and I was an instant father. You know, I went from looking after me to looking after, you know, four of us, two little girls. Um, and, you know, uh, you know, and, you know, learning, gee, how do I now pay? I, I was just, how am I going to pay for these girls? <laughs> you know, and uh, how am I going to afford this family suddenly, you know? As a, as a step-parent and a new husband, and no wonder it was a rough time at times, um, but, you know, you got through, and it was just cool. And I realized, too, in, in getting this fresh revelation like this, because I haven't heard anyone preach it quite like this before, to be honest, um, I realized I never gave my tithe because I had to. I gave it because I gave it the Abraham way. I was just really wrapped. I was saved and thankful to God that he would save a wretch like me. I was just so wrapped that I could do something positive because I knew how much tithing I was doing down at the pub. And I knew how much tithing I was doing at the drug house and the tinnies and the LSD tabs. And man, I loved, I man, I was a big tither to Jim Beam. Tithed every Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night to chicken and chips at one o'clock in the morning. Tithed to them every week. Did those before McDonald's. Yeah, down in Stoke. Again, pie cart uptown. Have a fight in a pie. See where all the action was. It was midnight because pubs used to close at 11 or 10 o'clock. I tithed to all of them. What'd they do for me? God did in me what God did in Abraham. I was just thankful. And I haven't stopped. And I realize now how God has blessed me is because I actually just did it out of the purity of innocence, of faith, belief, and huge thankfulness to God that he would save John Ferris, Johnny Rotten, and turn him into Johnny B. Good. Be good. Not always good. Be good. <laughs> if you go on, I'm not going to do it now, but you go on and read Genesis 15, the verses that follow straight after that. You know what God said to Abraham? He says, do not be afraid, Abraham. And this is just after he's given a tithe. <laughs> I think this just makes me laugh. Because I know the fear sometimes of not having enough money. We've all felt that. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. I am your exceedingly great reward. And I have found God faithful to that for the last 38 years of my walk with Christ. And we've gone through some dark times and some hell times, but God has stayed faithful. I want you to find this. I want you to have the spark in your eye like the spark in my eye because you've found this. I want you to have this fire in you that I've got in me right now because I found it like Abraham found it when he tithed. I want you to tithe, not because you have to. If you feel you have to, don't. There you go. Because you're just being religious. And I believe in tithing, and I believe every believer should. But I want you coming out of this. Because I'm praying this morning, says I don't want them to have head knowledge, I want them to have revelation. 
I want you to have something that moves your belly. <laughs> Move your intestines. Get you operating out of faith. And you might say, gee, pastor, doing that right now because I'm in a bit of a situation. Okay, start something. For me, I just did it, and I, and I, I, I just about would encourage you to just do it because I've found God faithful. I really have, and I, I, I've never tried to work God out here. I've just worked out from here, there, here, do. 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 There goes your here, do. <laughs> there, here, do. <laughs> here we go, cat. Got the here, do. There, here, do. Um, but if there's a little struggle, that's okay. It's all good. No, never condemnation in God. Beautiful way. No condemnation. Start something. Start with ten dollars. You say in three months, Lord, I'm going to get there. You do it. Do it out of what I've just shared with you. And if you need to listen to that twenty times till you get it, do it twenty. Do it every day. Every day you feel afraid, go and say that verse in, in um, Genesis 15, verse one: The Lord is my shield; He is my exceedingly great reward. Lay it all on God. And watch what God does. People here are going to come into fresh breakthroughs. And it's not because you tithe, it's because you have faith. Your tithe is going to secure it. So I've now secured my, my blessings this week. I've secured it with that AP. And with my, my offering that goes out, and sometimes... Um, Generally, Ali looks after that for me in the morning because she wants me free to be totally concentrating on this so I don't have to muck around with it, so I'm concentrating. But other times I'll get my tithe in the app out and I'll just bang something through extra because I just want to bless. I want to bless the building fund or I want to bless that because I'm blessed. See the freedom in it and the joy it comes? It might be five bucks, it might be 20 bucks, it could be a lot more. That's just between me and God, me and Ali and God. No one else's business. Not my business, not your business, God. That person can be God. See what I'm saying? But my tithe, I just bring it 10% gross every week. 38 years. Isn't that freaky? 38 years. Wow. I added it up once. <laughs> Astronomical. So cool. So thankful to God. Because I've secured something for my children. So Haley and Nico and Jensen, Carly and Shari, I've secured something for them. No matter what they think, I've secured something for them. I'm pushing it down. So that little cute bundle of blessing in Nico's arms right now, my grandson, has already got something secured because his Abraham went back to his Lord and Savior and that Abraham pulled it into his life and then pushed it forward. Pushed it forward. Reversed the curse. Broke the powers of my past and the power and I got born in the back. I got conceived in the back of a car over a bottle of gin. Every curse was laid right out there of addictions and problems and brokenness. But all of them have been broken I've had to fight that fight for 38 years. And I'm still battling in some things. But I do everything to push it forward for them. That's what Abraham did. That's what you've got to do. And if we could be unified on things like this as a church, you watch what God is going to do. It's going to be out the gate. You ain't seen nothing yet. I could sing, man. I'd just sing that song right now. You ain't seen nothing yet. It's a real old rock song, eh? <laughs> okay. You received it? Beautiful, eh? Let's stand to our feet. Give God some praise right now. There, here, do it.
That's faith. There, here, do it. That's faith. There, here, do it. It's faith. And it attracts the blessing. And then grab 10% of that, what's in you get, and put it in that basket, put it by AP, and secure it. That's what Abraham, I've got his genetics. No wonder I naturally did it. So don't fight your genetics. Fight the ugly bits. And grab the good ones. Amen? Okay, raise your hand to God. Father God, I pray right now that the impartation of your spirit and your word will be so beautifully strong in the beautiful people of God. Lord, I pray this new level of faith, Lord, in every aspect, in every area of their life is just going to go through the roof. It's going to secure stuff. It's going to grab hold of stuff. Things are going to happen beyond what we've, dr we've dreamed because we're moving out of the dream realm and we're moving into the faith action realm. And so, God, I thank you for your protection and your angels over our people, your word and your covenant and your blood over our people, Father, to go forth and be everything you created them to be. In Jesus' mighty name. And we all said together, amen, amen. Give God a big shout right now. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Beautiful. You know, if you don't know the Lord, I want to pray this prayer for you to receive Him if you haven't received Him. If that's you and you want Jesus in your life, you want God in your life, I want you to pray this prayer right now, right where you're standing. And uh, repeat these words after me. Dear Jesus, I ask today for you to come into my life to be my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me of all my sins and all my wrongdoings. I now surrender to you and I am yours forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Fill me, spirit of faith, that I might have the strength to obey you to walk in you and not only be blessed, but be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God some praise, everybody. Beautiful, beautiful, fantastic. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or you've been away from God for a long time or something and you prayed that prayer, just give me a wave right now, just so if there's anyone there I can know to pray for you. Anybody prayed that? Awesome. Bless you, my bro. Bless you, bro. Bless you, brother. Bless your sister there. That's awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful. Anyone else? Fantastic. That's so cool. So cool. Okay. Great stuff. Hey, look, what we're going to do is those people who prayed that, um, could you just you see, come up and I'll, I'll pray for you right now, just real quick, while we're in this presence of God. Can you just come? If you put your hand up, can you just come right now? And I'm just going to pray for you. Come with a friend if you like or someone beside you. Just come come stand up beside this awesome man here. And I'm, I'm just going to pray for you real quick. Just come right now. That's it. Just come right now. Beautiful. 